The paper goes into detail about Chromia, yet I was disappointed not to find a section explaining how Chromia functions as layer 2 enhancement for Ethereum. Let's now start explaining the key features of Chromia. The relational model is that the blockchain data and application states are stored in a relational database which brings tons of advantages such as rich indexing and querying. It means the data is indexed instantly when transactions are confirmed. Indexing basically eliminates possible lag between transactions that we all know very well. The relational language rel increases programmer productivity. Chromia is horizontally scaled, which means that each dApp has its own blockchain and thus the total throughput can be increased by increasing the total number of the nodes. Rich indexing is another key feature of Chromia. It means that the dApps can retrieve needed information directly from nodes that are running the application. In contrast, other blockchains need for such a retrieval the third-party tools which increase complexity and centralization. Chromia's unique PBFT style consensus is designed from first principles and we will surely talk about it a few slides later. Then there is a talk about first-class dApps, uh, which means that the dApps are considered first-class entities, giving developers tons of flexibility and control. And we'll talk about what it means as well later. Node providers replace the miners from traditional proof-of-work blockchains and ensure that in case of co-loading of major mining pools, they won't be able to exert control over the network. For instance, in Bitcoin, if the four largest mining pools would collude, they could gain the control over the network. The first set of providers will be picked by the Chroma way, but then every other providers will be voted for by the existing providers. So um, that was a little bit about the key features of Chromia. Now let's talk a bit about BBFT style consensus we've mentioned. Team has performed extensive research on proof of work and proof of stake and surprisingly they both failed to impress them and the team's expectations for civil attack resistance and for the measure of decentralization were not met so they decided not to go for either of these and they decided to design their own consensus from first principles the Chromia software runs on nodes, which are physical or virtual instances of computing power. Users connect to these nodes to post transactions, to query data or synchronize their private replicas. The dApps run on multiple nodes and of course it's crucial that these nodes belong to different non-colluding providers. Then the paper goes deeper into how Chromia wants to make sure that this collection of nodes that one DAP runs on isn't colluded and that these providers are distinct. So the Chromia uh, team argue that there is plenty of evidence that for instance Microsoft and Google are different providers, even though there isn't a mechanical way to prove it. Additionally, there is an extra layer of security on Chromia, which is anchoring the entirety of Chromia in major proof-of-work blockchain like Bitcoin every few blocks. This way, Chromia confirmation strength arguably improves a lot. We've also mentioned the term first-class tabs. So it means that each dApp has its own blockchain uh, with specific set of nodes that it runs on and typically its own dedicated CPU thread. This way dApps perform and scale EONS better. Also, fees are paid directly to nodes by the dApps instead, instead of an end user. For instance, the dApp may choose to pay the fees from its profits. The fees 
even reflect the real resources consumed by the DAP, so the pricing is arguably fairer. There are even updates system built into the platform and other fancy stuff. Now let's briefly talk about the use cases. Chromia is ideal for a blockchain based MMORPGs which are at the moment not possible because the um, current um, uh, platforms don't possess the input output throughput required. But also Chromia is, uh, is suitable for business use cases, particularly applications connected to transparency. The paper is very engaging, but it's 41 pages long and I can't talk about all of it in this video. But I still uh, have to go through the governance. Uh, on Chromia, it's the providers that have the governance votes and its 66% majority is needed for approval. The proposals can be, for instance, for system updates, for tuning parameters such as the prices for running the DAP, also for the new provider's acceptance or for a bad actor's banning. Initially, Chromia will have centralized governance by Chrome Away. Many other platforms chose to follow the staked coin voting but Chromia rejected it from many reasons. Some of these reasons explain that this system is actually unfair because the rich people have even more power. Um, exchanges, for instance, are voting for the people because people leave lots of their coins on exchanges and staking them there. Or there is an observer observable bribery, cartels forming and centralization. And that is actually a fact that is happening on many platforms that allow the staked coins voting. Also, since each application operates on its own blockchain, different dApps may have different governance or no governance at all. At the same time, there's gonna be some common rules that have to be true, something like constitution that, that each dApp's governance has to follow. And there is still so much more interesting written in the paper, yet I have so little time, but I did my best to bring you all the key points. 